So it's three years to the day since I opened my Vanguard ISA. And I'll be honest, I've not been particularly looking forward to putting this video together because the market has taken a massive dump. Everything is down at the moment and my portfolio is absolutely no different. My portfolio is probably protected somewhat by not holding lots of risky individual growth stocks and instead holding broad market indexes in the form of ETFs. However, as you'll see in a moment, that hasn't stopped my portfolio getting absolutely hammered. As I said, it's three years to the day since I started investing. So what better time to hop in and have a look at the progress of my portfolio from nothing all the way through to what it's valued at right now. We're also gonna have a look at exactly what's happened over the last year. So from the two year anniversary to now where we sat at three years and it doesn't make for pretty reading. We'll hop straight into that as well. Just to set the scene a little bit for those of you who are brand new to my channel, I started investing in May of 2019 from absolutely nothing. I knew that investing was the right thing to start doing and I just got my first proper job after completing my master's degree as a lecturer. So I had a bit of spare cash on the side and because I knew very little about investing, I knew that ETFs and broad market indexes were the best way for me to start with the least risk possible, with maximum diversification. And at the time, Vanguard was the cheapest, the safest, and probably one of the most reputable sites out there. So I didn't look any further. After about a year of investing and with the whole country going into lockdown, I decided to start documenting my progress in investing. So with all that out of the way, let's hop straight in and see just how much my portfolio has been decimated. Let's do it. Here we are then inside my Vanguard account. You can see my ISA is currently valued at £10,889.11. And yes, for those eagle-eyed amongst you, you'll see that that actually hasn't moved anywhere since the 3rd of January when I recorded this video. At that point, my portfolio was worth £10,811. And that was about four months ago now. So I've had four months of continual investment into my portfolio and I've only gained about 70 quid. Not that great, really. The markets have been in absolute turmoil and it doesn't look like it's gonna stop anytime soon. If you've started investing in the last two, maybe three years, we've seen the COVID downturn, but that was a real quick sharp snap and it recovered very, very quickly. Personally, I think this is gonna be a much longer game. So it's time for all the finance YouTubers and investors out there to practice what they preach. Time in the market is better than timing the market. Be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. This is an opportunity to make lots of money for the long term. Yes, the short term is gonna be very difficult and it's not nice to look at your portfolios. However, there's a massive opportunity here and I, and you for that matter, need to take maximum advantage. You can see on screen my personal time-weighted rate of return has fallen all the way back to 22.01%. And bearing in mind that was up in the 40s, almost 50% within my previous videos. So that has pulled back massively over the last few months. My largest holding is still in the S&P 500 with a weighting of 36.83% and a total value of 4,010 pounds and 81 pence. Without further ado then, let's jump in a little further and have a look at this mess. So we'll click on investments down the left-hand side as we do always, and you can see my current holdings. But before we do that, we're gonna hop straight into the performance. And you can see, obviously, I started the 23rd of May 2019. Today is the 23rd of May 2020. So this is exactly three years to the day of where my portfolio is sat. So you can see the growth of the portfolio over time. As I said, I first started off investing just £500 because that was the minimum one-off instalment that I could make at the time to start the account. And I invested all of this into the Vanguard Life Strategy 100. The Life Strategy 100 is a great place to start. And if you haven't heard about it before or just want a bit more information, check out this video up above where I break it down in simple terms. You can see this over time then slowly increase as I was investing small amounts every single month. Nothing major, I'm not gonna change the world here, but I was investing monthly installments that actually made a difference to me until we got up to March of 2020. And then of course we had the COVID dip, which now comparatively to the end over here is not really that much of a dip at all. 
um, and I managed to take quite a large advantage of that obviously working from home um, I invested probably about 1500 pounds within a three maybe four month period which again might not be much to people watching but to me it was a large quantity of money and you can see as the COVID pandemic disappeared or started to slow down I managed to reap the rewards of investing a lot of capital during that time something I am going to try and do now is do exactly the same thing yes the markets could dip a lot still substantially however i want to pile as much capital as i can into the markets right now to hopefully reap the rewards in 10 15 years when this is a long time behind us and i can hopefully be sat on a beach somewhere with a drink in hand so after covid it continued to rise continued to rise there are obviously some slight pullbacks when we had other lockdowns and scares different variants and, and bits and pieces like that but for all intents and purposes the markets have done exceptionally throughout an unprecedented time until we get up to around February of this year. And this is where everything started to kind of fall to pieces. We've seen the invasion of Ukraine, global supply chain issues, inflation, and much, much more. And you can see that's dipped substantially because of it. Uh, we had a lot, bit of a rally here, um, and again, that's just continued to kind of fall away. So for all intents and purposes, my portfolio has stagnated over the last I guess really six months. Overall then in my portfolio, I have contributed almost 10,000 pounds now in three years. So I've contributed 9,870 pounds within that three year period. On average then that's 3,290 pounds a year. And my investments have returned to me 1,019 pounds and 11 pence. And obviously that sees me my total value of 10,889 pounds and 11 pence. However, for those of you who've been following these videos a while, you will know that that is significantly down on where I've been previously. So let's just have a quick look. Let's have a look at the one year, and that's obviously from last year right through to now. So you can see over the last year, I've contributed 3,210 pounds, and that's gonna be something I'm looking to increase this year. I want to be investing at least 300 to 350 pounds on average every single month. Now I've been quite fortunate, I've managed to get a promotion at work, and that's something I'll probably discuss a little bit later. But obviously with the promotion comes an increase in my take home pay, alongside the side hustles and the additional bits that I'm doing for income. So I'm looking to increase that, like I say, to about 350 pounds per month, so watch this space. However, the sad thing, I guess, brings a bit of a tear to my eye, is that my investments over the last year have grown by 40 pounds and 71 pence. And if you think about it, I've actually earned more in dividends than 40 pounds this year. So I'm actually at a capital loss throughout the last year. Now there's obviously nothing we can do about this apart from continuing to invest and hoping that at some point in the future, the good times will come back, which of course, if we look historically, they will. But when you look at it like that, I've been investing money over the last year and got not really anything in return. If you have a look at the yearly calculations, you'll be able to see over the last year, I've paid 13 pounds in charges. I've actually earned almost 160 pounds in dividends. We can flick that now back to inception and you can have a look over the longevity of the portfolio. I've paid 20 pounds and 60 pence in charges, dividends at 243 pounds, uh, and obviously the capital investment, the unrealized capital gains of 778 pounds and 20 pence. So it's not all doom and gloom. We can have a look on the month by month as well if you really want to see a grown man cry. Uh, and you can see in May so far this month, I'm down 520 pounds. Um, that's, yeah, I didn't realize it was quite, quite that bad, but at least I'll be able to cry myself to sleep now. Something you'll also notice is that in April, I didn't actually invest anything. Uh, and that's not because I didn't want to, it's because I had a new bank card, which got blocked immediately. So I couldn't do anything with it. Um, but obviously I've accounted for that here and I should be investing more in May to, to make up for, for that. So over the last two months, I've lost almost, almost 800 pounds from the value of my portfolio. Um, that's, yeah, quite sad. And if you wanna break it down even further and make me even more upset, if you look over here, um, so the bit I've just highlighted now, I was actually at a cumulative return of 1,900 pounds, so 1,919 pounds. That's including capital returns, uh, capital gains, sorry, and dividends. And look, now we're at 1,019 pounds. So over the last, since December, my portfolio has actually lost 900 pounds um, in unrealized return, which essentially is what I've invested. So that basically covers for it. So you can see here, it was worth 10,814. It's now worth 10,889. So I'm up 
70 pounds, brilliant. It really doesn't make for positive reading, does it? But I'm sure all of your portfolios look like this as well. So rest assured, it's not just you out there who's struggling at the moment, it's also my portfolio. If you break it down and look at the investments as well, um, we can have a look at this on an investment basis. One positive, I guess, that's coming out of the interest rate rises is that I'm now earning interest on the cash that's stored within my Vanguard portfolio that's not put to use. Um, so you can see income, this was at 18p previously, I think, it's now at 24p. So an absolutely massive 6p in gain. Uh, yeah, that's great. And um, the FTSE Emerging Markets, you can see we're at a loss now, we're at a loss of £12, so a kind of gross return of negative almost 1.5%. And we're still up for the Asia Pacific uh, X Japan, and we're up £97 there, or 27%, which, yes, yeah, that's really not too bad, actually, is it? Um, the Developed Europe X UK, um, we are down around 10%. Obviously, Europe at the moment is undergoing a lot of different stresses and strains. Um, lots of European oil and gas comes from Russia, so obviously that's increasing inflation, which is causing people to panic within the stock market, um, which is why I've got this loss of kind of £60 at the moment, but I guess that will always improve at some point in the future. We've got the Japan ETF, which again, I'm down 9% or £42. Um, the FTSE 100 is actually still performing fairly well for me, and I think one of the reasons for this is because I've held on to it for such a long period of time. And I'm actually still up 33% here, um, which has actually now turned into my largest gross return of any of my investments, which is a massive turnaround for it if you can remember back to a few years ago. Um, but I'm actually up £264 here with a dividend of £90, so yeah, brilliant. Uh, the S&P 500, like I said, my largest holding, up just under 30%, or 443 pounds. And we've got the life strategy, which again, I'm slowly moving across into my other investments because that's a thing of the past for me. And I've moved into my six fund portfolio, which you can check out just up here. Now, something I actually moaned about with Vanguard in one of my previous updates was that they didn't break down my geographical regions properly. Most of it was stored in other, and that's actually something that they've corrected. So you can see here the total breakdown of my geographical allocation. So you can see that I currently hold 45% within North America, 18% within the UK, so that needs to come down a little bit because that's I'm still a bit overexposed to the UK, if I'm honest. 2% uh, in Central South America, 2% in Middle East and Africa, 16% in Asia Pacific, only 7% in Japan, and obviously 9% in Europe as well. So this gives me a much better understanding of the breakdown of my portfolio. So top, top marks here to Vanguard for, for sorting that out. You can also see the sector allocation uh, and then performance over the last three months. I'm actually down 2.17%, but you can't win them all. Something I forgot to show was actually the amount of units that I hold in each of these funds. So we'll slowly come down and have a look at them. We won't bother with the Vanguard life strategy. But you can see I hold 31 units in the emerging markets, uh, 47 in the FTSE 100, 27 in the Developed Asia Pacific at Japan, 30 in the Developed Europe ETF, 29 in Japan, and then 68 in the S&P 500. Now there is a lot of fear out there at the moment, but if we really want to put into context actually what's happening and where we are based on the last five years, this graph shows that really well. So you can see at the moment, the S&P 500 ETF VUSA is valued at 58 pounds and 98 pence per unit. And I've actually got an average cost per unit of £53.56. So you can see I've actually earned £5 or over £5, £5.42 for every single unit I hold in that fund. And I hold 68 units of the fund. And that's demonstrated here on the graph. So you can see we're here right now. So it looks like we've had a substantial dip and we have had a substantial dip. But if you follow the line back, you can see that this is equal or just about equal to the price kind of in June of last year. So yes, we've wiped off that growth from June of last year and all of this that I've bought above will be at a loss per kind of individual purchase or investment. But if we look back to when we first started investing, it was valued at about 42 pounds per unit. So we're still up 16 pounds on those investments I made. And if you look at the bottom here at the COVID crash, it was valued at under 40 pounds per unit. So this really does show the power of buying and holding throughout whatever market conditions we see. You can still see all of these green dots here that I'm buying, all these green dots, all the way up to about this point here, they're still netting me a positive rate of return because the market hasn't yet dipped down to a point where it's below those investments. So this does pose a perfect buying opportunity. I'm still gonna be investing for at least the next 30 years. 
So this is absolutely perfect. This is a time, this is an opportunity that we don't see every day. People are always worried about the value of their stocks. However, you should only worry about the value really if you're planning on crystallizing those investments in the near future. I'm not, so this is such a good opportunity. I'm sure it is for you guys as well. It's just the psychology of seeing that red, seeing those dips, seeing everything falling, which makes you worry. And this shows here better, I think, than anything, that if you continue to invest throughout any market conditions, and historically this is obviously, if you invest through any market condition, you will always come out in a positive light. Obviously past performance is not indicative of future returns. However, I think again, this is the perfect opportunity, especially if you're new to investing and not started, get yourself in now. As always, nothing you've heard here is financial advice. You've obviously got to make your own decisions and do your own research. But for me, this is a perfect opportunity for me to take as much cash as I can and pile it into the market. So at the end of this video then, and three years of the day since I started investing, I've managed to generate a five figure ISA valued at £10,889.11. And I believe we've had a green day in the market, so that will actually have increased a little bit, maybe up to £11-ish thousand pounds, which is a great place to be sitting. One of the ways that I've managed to springboard my investments is by using a process called matched betting. This is a way that you use bookie offers, so sign up offers and reload offers against them in such a way that you should guarantee profit. I've managed to make over 10,000 pounds using this process. So if it's something that you think would be helpful, especially with rising inflation and rising cost of living, check out the video up above, which shows you exactly how to start match betting. And I'll be doing another video very soon to break it down in even more simplistic terms. So keep an eye out for that one. Also, if you haven't started investing and there's no time like the present, I've got links down in the description below to free trade and trading 212, along with Coinbase, which give you a nice little free share when you start investing using them, or free crypto, depending on the one you choose. Um, so yeah, if you fancy supporting the channel and you haven't started investing yet, just go and grab your free share. As always, if you have enjoyed this video, please do like it, drop a comment down below to let me know how your portfolio is getting on and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already and you wanna catch all of my future portfolio updates just like this one. Of course, it's a difficult time in the market for everyone at the moment, but my mantra is buy and hold. Continue to invest, time in the market is better than time in the market. So hopefully showing the absolute catastrophe that is my portfolio to you guys will give you a little bit of comfort that you're not alone. Keep holding on to those investments. As soon as you sell, that's when you crystallize your loss and that's when you actually make your loss. Yes, it's gonna be a difficult time. It's not gonna be easy. It's bad looking at your portfolio every day. It, it's, it's not a nice situation. But if you hold on to your investments and continue to invest, historically, you'll be looking for a much brighter future. So hopefully that's put your mind at ease a little bit. And with that said, I'll catch you very soon in the next one.